Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I um, apologize for the break in transmission right there. Uh, our settings were not done properly, but hopefully you uh, will join with us this morning. So I'm going to wait for you to quickly join. Uh, I know we had a, a, a break in transmission, but in the meantime, what we're going to be doing is that we will, you know, play one of uh, my summons uh, that I, I have done in the past. If you could just... Um, Give us a moment, thank you. Heaven and earth will pass away. The Bible says that heaven and earth as you know it will pass away. You know, all the moons and the skies and everything in the galaxy will pass away. But the Bible says that my word will never pass away. Do you know why? Because the Bible says it is the word of God that made everything that is seen with our physical eyes. God is dependable and so is his word. The word of God will succeed in doing what I send it to do, says the Lord. Don't let the devil tell you lies and tell you that God has forgotten about you. God has not forgotten about you. Even when we do all these horrible things, the Bible says he remains faithful. The word of God never changes. The word of God stands forever. And that's why you can depend on that word. Good morning, everybody. Good morning again. Um, as I said earlier on, for those of you who have just joined me now, we had a little break uh, uh, with transmission between the song Jan Togozo and me uh, uh, coming on. I think, you know, the, our settings were not right. And hopefully, you know, many of you who were uh, there would, you know, come back again. We had a couple of people that have joined with us. But I see that some have come back again. Miss No, I can see that you're back again. And many others, I know they were there. Uh, Miss Mutswane Tsumutimula, my lovely wife, was there. And... Uh, Numbulelo was there. I remember also Zandi Lembata uh, was there, Miss Mapala, um, and many others were there. So please just uh, notify those that were there. Uh, Mr. Mkubedi, I can see you now. Uh, you are here now. Uh, we really like to apologize. You know, this technology, once in a while, there are certain things that we have to do, and sometimes if you don't do them right, it just throws you out. So that's what happened. We played the song. By Utogozo. and then after that you know it the system just shut down so we apologize for that and so please make sure that we all come in i see the majority of us are here uh, mr seconde is here and many others who had joined earlier on are here so hopefully even all of those who have been you know on our previous broadcast will come through uh, to this broadcast hey jackie lawrence it's good to see you sir uh, we are so uh, honored to have you i see sis rachel Ramala is here, um, uh, part two uh, is here as well, um, and many other people, Sis Pusi, uh, welcome, welcome, thank you so much for joining us uh, in this morning prayer. Without any waste of time, I would like to just quickly go straight into the Word of God. I know our time is gone, we will be quick so that we can have some more time of prayer. I want to read from the book of Job chapter one, Job chapter one, this is a, you know, a book that many people uh, don't re really, we don't preach from, you know, uh, once in a while you would hear a preacher preaching from this, but for the most part, you know, we hardly hear this. I am told, even as I read, you know, Bible uh, theology that, um, you know, the book of Job is one of the first books that was written of the Bible, and um, it, it is one of the oldest books of the Bible, and so um, it, it's a very significant book, and I hope that the Lord you know, will teach you some things and will reveal some things to you from this book of Job. Uh, I'm, I'm starting from chapter 1 and I'm really just going to read a lot of verses and, you know, we will go straight into what the Lord wants us to learn this morning. In verse 1 it says, In the land of Uz there lived a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. He had seven sons and three daughters and he owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, five hundred yoke of oxen and five hundred donkeys and had a large number of servants. He was the greatest man among all the people of the East. Well, he was <laughs> what people call the goat. Um, so this man, as we see from just these few you know, verses that I have read, that he was a very you know, wealthy man. Not only just wealthy, but he was blameless, upright, and feared God and shunned evil. So he really just, this passage of scripture really just dispels that myth that if you are rich, you cannot be a blameless man, you cannot be upright, or you cannot even serve God better. You know, there's nothing such as that. You know, throughout Scripture, 
we see people who you know have really been loaded financially and otherwise who were still upright righteous you know shunned evil and you know were blameless before god so that's what job you know was and first of all he says his sons used to hold feasts in their own homes on their birthdays they used to have a lot of parties you know on their birthdays they would invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them you know family gathering and when a period of feasting had run its course Job would make arrangements for them to be purified. Early in the morning, he would sacrifice a band uh, offering for each of them, thinking, perhaps my children have sinned and cast God in their hearts. This was Job's regular custom. You know, I'm not sure if he was, if he was, if he was doing this out of fear or if he was just doing this because he loved God so much that he wanted his sons and daughters, you know, to be on the same path. The scripture says after him, them having parties and stuff like that, he would he would uh, offer sacrifices in case his sons, you know, have committed uh, sin and so that they can be purified and be cleansed and so forth and so forth. In verse 6, he says, One day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? That's what he, 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 he said uh, uh, to Satan. And, and the Bible says, Saint, Satan answered the Lord from roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Now, here is God speaking to Satan. Satan responding, hey, listen, I, I just came back from earth now. I was just roaming around the earth. You know, it sounds like that verse that says he's roaring around us like a lion, seeking whom he may devour. So God says, have you considered my servant Job? You know, uh, th this is uh, many uh, what many of us would wish, you know, God would say about you. Have you considered my servant Ubanban? Have you considered my servant so and so? Because God can vouch for you because of the way that you live. Now, verse 9 says, does God, does Job fear God for nothing? So Satan replied, have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hands so that his flocks and heads are spread throughout the land. But now stretch out your hand and strike everything he has. He will surely curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, very well then, everything he has is in your hands. Put on the man himself to do not lay a finger. God says, hey, listen, you go ahead, you know, you do whatever, as long as you don't lay your hand, uh, your, 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 as long as you do not lay a finger on him, the scripture says. Then Satan went out in the presence of the Lord. And one day when Job's sons and daughters were again having a party and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house, a messenger came to Job and said, the oxen were plowing and the donkeys were grazing nearby and the Sabaeans attacked and made off with them. So, they put the servants to the sword, and I'm the only one who has escaped to tell you. So they're telling Job this. Says, hey, listen, the Sabaeans came and attacked, you know, all the oxen. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, the fire of God fell from the heavens and burned up the sheep and the servants. I'm the only one left. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, the Chaldeans formed their three raiding parties and swept down on your camels. They made, made off with them. They put the servants to the sword, and I'm the only one left. Verse 18, while he was still speaking, another one came and said, your sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the, old, at the oldest brother's house. This brother loved parties, man, the oldest one. When suddenly a mighty wind swept in from the desert and struck the four corners of the house, it collapsed on them. They are all dead. I'm the only one who had escaped to tell you. At this, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. He then fell on the ground in worship and said, naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken. May the name of the Lord be praised. And in all this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. What are you saying this morning, Pastor George? What are you trying to bring out, you know, of this particular chapter, you know, of the book of Job? Are you talking to us about the parties that the oldest brother, you know, always had in his house? Are you talking about, you know, how rich Job was? Are you talking about you know, uh, how blameless and how upright Job was. Are you talking about, you know, all of these things that you've been reading about? This is what I'm saying to you. The scripture says that when God gave Satan the, the allowance, permission, that's the right word I wanted to use, the permission to go and, you know, uh, deal with Job, for lack of a better word, you know, things started happening. Have you ever been in a place where you felt like everything around you was falling apart have you ever been in a place where you know you felt that for some reason it looks like god is 
not there for you. Job had this experience. Probably Job did not know the conversation that took place between God and Satan. The Bible says while he was just sitting, you know, in the comfort of his home with all the things that he had, with all the riches he had, messengers came one by one telling Job, this is what is happening. Your camels have been destroyed. Your sons were having a party and they have been destroyed. You know, this has been happening. and This has been happening. Maybe some of you who are listening to me this morning, you had some kind of a Job experience. Or maybe of you, even right now, maybe even this morning, you woke up and you want to pray because you feel that what is happening in your life is too much. The one moment you hear about this and the next moment you hear about that. The next moment, you know, you have this sickness that is attacking your body. The next moment, you have this family member that is not nice to you. The next moment, you know, you have your job, you know, not going in right, the right way. The next moment, you have all these financial woes in your life. Maybe some of you right now who are sitting there, you're saying, but Pastor George, you know, I can identify with what was happening with Job. Maybe not at the same scale as Job. But I'm having my own, you know, share of mishaps. I'm having my own share of troubles. I'm having my own share of things that are taking place in my life. I feel like my life is losing control. I feel like everything is, seems to be falling apart in my life. God, where art thou? What is going on in my life? Lord, why do you allow the devil to just come and attack me the way that he's attacking me? I think the lesson we can also learn from this scripture is that sometimes it's not what you have done or the sin that you have committed or the things that you have missed in your life that you are experiencing the things you're experiencing today. The drought, the barrenness, the challenges, and the attacks that you are having today are not necessarily as a result of the bad decisions, and many other things that you have done. Yes, I know that there are times when we suffer because of the best decisions, when we suffer because of the things that we have done in the past. I know there are moments like that, but sometimes it's not based on, you know, the things that you have done. You're living for God, you're attending church all the time, you do whatever it is, you're praying every morning, you're waking up, you're studying the Word of God, you believe in the Word of God, you're doing everything else, and yet you experience some of these challenges. Why? Jesus said, I believe in the book of uh, John chapter 16, verse 33, and you go read it. Jesus said, in this world, tribulations will come. You and I, there are times when we go through tribulations, not because of the bad things that we have done, but because we're living in a fallen world. And therefore, when things are falling apart in your life and you feel like you're losing control or you feel like, you know, this is just too much, just know that it is not necessarily because of anything wrong that you've done. Now, the big thing is how do you respond when stuff is happening in your life? How do you go about responding to that? Do you, you know, curse God and die? Or do you just curse God and continue with your life and then all of a sudden give your life to, you know, to, uh, to the, ways, the world's way of doing things? Do you, do, do, you, do you just become indifferent when you are attacked on when things are falling apart in your life? We can learn from this passage of scripture a lesson from the story of Job. That the Bible says that when these things were happening to Job, the Bible says, and you see it right here in verse 20, the scripture says, At this, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. He fell on the ground in worship. What do you do when you feel like things are not happening right in your life? You fall on your face and you go to God in worship. You say, Lord, even when I do not understand, even when so many things are happening in my life, even if I don't know why you, I have to go through this, even if I don't know why this is happening in my life, even if I don't know why, you know, this sickness is on me, even when I don't know why, you know, my relationship is falling apart, even if I don't know why, you know, my job is not happening the way it's supposed to happen, even if I don't know why people are hating me, even if I don't know why my 
husband is treating me the way he is doing. Even if I don't know why am I not even considered. I mean, I've been believing you. I've lived for you. And for some reason, I've been believing you in this particular area. And for some reason, things don't be shaped, seem not to be shaping up. You've got to just go to God in worship and say, Lord, I thank you today because you are God and I'm not. You got to go to God and say, Lord, I worship you that in the sovereignty of your being, of, of who you are, Lord, I am still saying, Thou art God, I do not understand, but you are God in my life. If you read the book of Job, chapter 2 and chapter 3 and chapter 4, you will see that the intensity of his problems just became worse and worse and became bigger and bigger and become, became more intense every day as it goes. Now, his friends came and they wanted him to, you know, do things that he was not supposed to do. You know, his friends were nice to him in the beginning. But later on, as they see the challenges just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Some of them did even, including his wife, by the way. His wife said, Job, why don't you just curse God and die? And God said, you foolish woman, you know, why do you say stuff like that? Sometimes you're going through stuff, you know, and you think that things will be better in two days or better in a day or so, and things just get worse and worse and worse and worse. What do you do? Do you just throw your, your, your toys out of the court? Do you just you know, do what Job's wife said his husband must do? No, you just get into a place of worship and say, Lord, I don't understand. Lord, I don't know why. Lord, I don't understand what's going on in my life, but all I do is I'm going to worship you. I worship you, O oh God. I worship you. In the midst of all of these things, I worship you, O oh God. And if you fast forward from chapter 1 and you go all the way to the last chapter of the book of Job, then you see what God did in the life of Job. And what am I saying to you this morning, child of God? I'm saying, if you stay on course, if you stay on course of worship, if you keep on believing God, if you keep on saying, Lord, you are God and I'm not, and I'm going to trust you and I'm going to put my trust in you, I'm going to look to you, the author and the finisher of my faith. I choose not to look to the left, not to the right, but I choose to look to you. You are going to have the same results that Job had, you know, in the last chapter of the book of Job. The Bible says that Job, you know, had the most beautiful, you know, children, even after he lost these ones that he had, but at the end of Oxalayo is that Job, you know, everything that he had was restored and even more. God wants to restore things in your life. But the question is, what do you do when you are going through hardships? What do you do when your world seems to be falling apart? What do you do? Stay in God. In any way, there is not any other better way to handle this matter, brothers and sisters. All we got to do is let's stick with God. Let's stay with God. When we stay with God and we stick with God, everything will be all right in our lives. Everything will turn out all right in our lives. You know, sometimes I feel for people, you know, who don't have a relationship with God. Because I'm asking myself this morning, what do you do? What do you do when things, you know, seem to be falling apart in your life? Because you will go from one pillar to another pillar. And you'll go from one post to the other post. Because you, 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 you have no way to resolve your problems. But the Bible says Job worshipped. And he stayed with God and he stuck with God. And when you stick with God and when you worship and you, when you stay with God Almighty, you know that your life will turn out to be all right. I know I'm talking to somebody this morning. I don't know what is troubling you. I don't know what is it that you've been asking God for a long time. I don't know what it is, you know, that has been falling apart in your life. You know, you lost your job and then you went back home to stay with your mother or you stayed, you know, with your brother or your family friend. And even when you went there, you know, they were not nice to you. And even when they were not nice to you and things are happening, you have lost money, you know, in a particular deal. You thought you were yeah, investing in something else. You lost money in it. And, you know, some of your clients have now, you know, ran away from you. And, you know, things are just happening, Jay, in your life. You know, your children are turning against you. You know, and all of a sudden your husband is not nice to you. All of a sudden your wife has, you know, now developed an attitude towards you and things are just happening. And, and maybe because of things in your family and, you know, you have now come to a place of where you are so stressed, you are stressed so much that your health is failing you. You know, you, you, things are just happening. You're stressed because of what is going on in your life. Hey, listen to me. Listen to me. Instead of complaining about that. Instead of running around and, and try to seek answers in the wrong places, do what Job did. Go down on your knees and worship him and say, Lord, I know that it's going to be all right. I know it will be okay. It might not be in two weeks. It might not be in three weeks. It might not be in a day, but Oxalai, like I said, is that when the dust settles, I will be the one 
that is victorious. Child of God, God wants you to be victorious. Child of God, listen to me. God wants to restore that which the enemy has stolen. And when God restores that which the enemy has stolen in your life, if the enemy has stolen your health, if the enemy has stolen your relationships, if your enemy, the enemy has stolen your marriage, if the enemy has stolen your children, if the enemy has stolen your finances, if the enemy has stolen your peace, if the enemy has stolen whatever it is in your life, get ready, get ready, get ready, because God is going to restore. If he did it for Job, he will do it for you. But your attitude and what you do in the meantime is what will trigger, you know, what God is going to do in your life. So I want you to be encouraged this morning. Be encouraged because God is at work in behind the scenes. God is at work in your life. God loves you so much that he will not allow you to remain where you are. God loves you so much that he wants to do great things in your life. And when he does it, you will know it, that this is God. When he does it, you will know that your hand was not involved in this, but only God's hand was involved in this. God will not let you Go throughout your life. Suffer the way that you do. God will not allow, you know, for Satan to have a filled day with you. God will not allow Satan to have a great day, you know, or a filled day with you where your marriage is concerned, where your life is concerned, where your finances are concerned, you know, where your health is concerned, where your peace is concerned, where everything concerning you is concerned. God will not allow the enemy to have the last word in that regard. But he, almighty God, El Shaddai, Je Jehovah Jireh, the one who provides, the one who heals you, the one who gives you peace is the one that is going to have the last word. We're going to pray this morning. We're going to pray with that in mind. We're going to pray this morning understanding that God will have the last word in your situation. Hallelujah. I believe that God is talking to someone this morning. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God will have a last word. I want you to open up your mouth right now, even before we pray, and say, as for me, come on, say it wherever you are. Say, as for me, God will have the last word. Come on, say it like you mean it. Say, as for me and my house, God has the last word concerning us, concerning me. God has the last word. And that's what I wanted to bring to you this morning. That don't despair. Don't throw the towel. Don't, you know, uh, commit suicide and go into some place of depression. Don't allow the spirit of depression because it is the enemy that wants you to be depressed and so that you lose your mind and you take your life. Let God be God, even if you don't understand. So, this morning we're going to pray. We're going to pray for, you know, a couple of things. I, I sensed very strongly in my heart that we need to continue praying for people this morning. I want us to continue praying even for families. I, I want us to pray for husbands and wives. I want us to pray for their marriages. I want us to pray for, you know, for, for there are a lot of single people I know and especially those that desire, you know, to be in some form of relationship. And they have been asking themselves, you know, but Lord, what's going on in our lives? You know, we trusting you with this. And some of you, you know, are, are in very complicated relationships. You know, you have a guy who's not even taking care of, you know, things or doesn't even want to commit to anything. Or you have a woman who's not even wanting to commit to anything. And, and you know, we're not now how you are. So, you know, uh, single-minded, you want things to work. And for some reason, the one you are with, you know, he's neither here nor there. We're going to pray for you this morning. We're going to pray for these relationships. We're going to pray for people today. We're going to pray for your children that you have been praying for them and or you have been trying to show them the way and for some reason these kids seem not just to see the way. We're going to pray for those children. So that's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to pray for relationships in general. We're going to pray, you know, for some of your siblings that for whatever reason you've been, you know, at loggerheads with for years and you don't know what's going on. The enemy has just brought this wedge between you and your brothers and sisters or your family members or the devil is just bringing this wedge between you and your wife you know you're forever arguing when when even with your husband you're forever you know, arguing and you know for some reason you don't talk the same language one is talking this way the other one is talking that way we're going to pray for you this morning we're going to pray for you this morning that the spirit of unity may just continue flowing in your life some of you, you know, you have lived for God. You have lived for God for many years. You've been believing God to answer your prayers, you know, when you were 29 or when you were 30. Now you are in your 40s. You, you're asking yourself, but God, you Mina, know, when is my story going to change? Hey, listen to me. God is going to change your story. God is not bound by how old you are. God is going to do certain things in your life in the name of Jesus. Some of you, you know, you might have lost your loved ones. And you've been asking questions about, Lord, why that one? Why did you have to take that one? You know, why not, you know, maybe you, you, you could have just done it differently. 
why? And maybe some of you, are, there are just so many things you could be asking in your life. And even as we pray today, God is going to come through for you. God is going to come through for you. I want you to believe this morning in Jesus' name. So we're going to pray for relationships. Number two, we're going to pray, you know, for our city, the city of Midrand, wherever you are. I don't know where you're watching me from. You could be watching me from overseas. You could be watching me from Africa or wherever it is. I want you to pray for your city where you are. Pray for your city. Pray against the spirit of, you know, suicides and, and, and drugs and whatever is going on in your city. You know, there are many things. We know, for example, as I said in the church, you know, in Midrand, we have been told that, you know, there are many young people who are on drugs. We know in this nation, in many nations of the world, world. You know, crime is always you know, one of the biggest challenges. So we're going to pray for those things this morning that God may come through for us. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? So we're going to pray. And I know our time is gone, but we're going to spend the next five minutes just in prayer. And as we pray, believe God. Believe God this morning in Jesus' name. As you pray for your relationship, as you pray for the relationships of others, I want you to believe God this morning. And God is going to do a great thing in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, O Rabba Kosala Mandre Ketesa. La raba ba ka sanda raba ba shikere borianda la bas mendere boko jila mandoro boko si borianda Father, this morning we come before you in worship, just like Job came and in worship. Lord, we are worshiping you this day in the name of Jesus. We worship you in spite of. We worship you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Even when certain things don't make sense in our lives, we worship you, Lord. We are saying. Thou art God and we are not. And we know, my God, in the name of Jesus, that you are in control. We know in the name of Jesus that you do greater and mighty things that we know is not. We know, God, that you are the God of restoration. You are the God that will restore what the canker worms have stolen. We know that you are a God that will restore what the enemy has stolen. We know that you are the God that will restore what the locusts, the palmer worms, and all sorts of worms have eaten and the termites have eaten in our lives. And Heavenly Father, we know that you are the God that will restore our peace. You are the God that will restore, my God, our finances. You are the God that will restore God in the name of Jesus, our families. You are the God that will restore, my God, everything that the enemy has stolen in our lives in Jesus' mighty name. And Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We magnify your name. Your name is exalted far above every other God. Your name, O oh God, is Jehovah. Your name is the Prince of Peace. Your name, God, is Jehovah. Tzedkenu. Your name, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, is Jehovah Nisi, our banner. Your name, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, is El Shaddai, the God that is more than enough. Your name, O oh God, is the one that provides. Your name is the God of restoration, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. You are the ancient of days, O oh God. You were there, my God, before the problems were there, and you will be there when the problems are over. You were there, my God, before the sorrows hit your people, and you will be there, my God, even when the sorrows are not there. You were there, my God, before complications. You will be there after the complications and in the midst of the complications. You will be there, my God, when life does not make sense. You will be there, my God, when life makes sense. You are God in every situation in the name of Jesus. We give you the praise and we honor you today. Just like Job who worshiped oh God, we are worshiping you this day. Just like my God in the name of Jesus, even when he did not understand why was that happening because he was a blameless man, an upright man, he shunned evil, but yet the Bible says that he worshiped. And Lord, we choose to worship this morning. We choose the attitude of worship this morning. We choose, my God, to stand in the name of Jesus, even when things don't make sense. Father, we magnify your name. Father, we glorify your name. Father, you are worthy of all praise. Father, we thank you. We worship you, Lord. There is no one like you. No one else can do that which you do. Father, I am praying for these, my brothers and sisters, those who are praying with me even this morning. I'm praying for them, every single one of them. I am praying for these ones that are watching me this morning. I am praying that God, regardless of what they are going through, regardless of the challenges, my God, they might be facing, regardless of how old their problems might be, regardless of how new their problem might be, Lord, I am praying for each and every one of them. That Heavenly Father, just like you came through for Job, Father, I pray that you come through for them in the name of Jesus. Let their story change, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Let those things that have been troubling them, O oh God, may be of the past, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let them know, oh God, that you are God and there is nothing impossible with you. Let them know, O oh God, that you do exceedingly, abundantly above all they can ask or think. Let them know, my God, that, that depression. Let them know, my God, that sadness. Let them know that, that whatever it is in their lives will not be, my God, 
the last thing or the last words or the last story in their lives. Heavenly Father, I pray today in the name of Jesus that let them, my God, know that you are a God that is able to solve every kind of problem. You are a sol problem solver. You are the God, Lord, that is able to do what man cannot do. Heavenly Father, I am praying for each and every one of them. I'm praying for those that are sick. I'm praying for those, my God, that are having relationship problems. I'm praying for those families, God. I'm praying for those families. I'm praying for marriages this morning. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that, Lord, whatever the devil has meant to do and whatever the devil has meant uh, to, to destroy, Father, we stop the devil in his tracks in the name of Jesus. We know, my God, that what you have put together, let no man put asunder in the name of Jesus. I'm praying, God, that let this be the season of marriages that are flourishing in Jesus' name. The devil had wanted to ride on the wave of the pandemic to try and destroy marriages and to, de to try and destroy relationships. And right now, in the name of Jesus, we are serving notice to the devil. We say, Satan, this is a new season where marriages are concerned. This is a new season where relationships are concerned. This is a new season where relationships between mother and a mother-in-law, I mean a daughter and a mother-in-law, this is the, a new season, God, where a son and a father-in-law is restored in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray, we are praying for those who are seeking your face, Lord. And Father, we know that you are God that never fails. We magnify your name. We glorify your name. Father, I'm praying against crime in our nation, crime in the city of Midrand. We stand against the spirit of crime. We say, Satan, in the name of Jesus, we destroy you. Instead, we pray that people may be give, people may get work in Jesus' mighty name. We pray that people may be employed in the name of Jesus. Those that are seeking for employment, those that are believing God for jobs, Father, I pray that you may come through for them in Jesus' name. If they are praying with me on this platform right now, in Jesus' name, I pray that you turn my God things around for them in in the glorious mighty name of Jesus. I give you the praise, Lord, for what you're doing. Father, we come against the spirit of crime. We say no more in South Africa, no more in Midrand, no more around us, no more in Jesus' name. We bind the spirit of crime in Jesus' name. We pray that people may walk in uprightness. We pray that many people that are doing crime, maybe even as a result of them being jobless. Father, we pray that, Lord, you give them ideas. And Father, we pray in Jesus' name that you give them jobs, that you come through for them in Jesus' mighty name. We give you the praise and we honor you today for you are wonderful and precious. We bind whatever is happening in our cities, Lord. Father, we pray that people may come to Christ in Jesus' name. People may know you in such a special way. We magnify your name. We glorify your name. And it's in the name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. Thank you, Lord, for changing things. Thank you for turning things around for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Come on, somebody give the Lord praise this morning, for he is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise. He is worthy of your praise this morning, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Oh my goodness, what a time in the presence of the Lord. What a time in his word. What a time in prayer. And we know that God is is able to do what man cannot do. Don't, be, don't despair. Come on, listen to me. Listen to me this morning. If you forgot everything that I said, all I want you to remember is do not despair. Do not despair based on what you're going through right now. Do not despair. God is for you. God loves you. And God is working behind the scenes for you. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hey, listen, everybody, those of you who are, you know, in the Midland area, Forest area, wherever it is, in the, in the nearby or nearby our church, you are welcome to come and join with us tonight at half past six as we continue to pray, as we continue to share the word of God. You can come and join with us. We're going to have a great time together. You know, it's always such a, a powerful, powerful, powerful time when we all meet together at number 130 Plantation Road. Uh, at our church, House of Faith Church, right here in Midrand. We believe that as you join with us, you know, and you join with other brothers and sisters, your life will never be the same again. There's such a corporate anointing that flows when we pray together in that place. God bless you. I love you all. And may the Lord continue to increase you even as you go through, you know, this day. This is the day that the Lord has made and you will rejoice and be glad in it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. We'll see you tonight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So God was saying, if I have spoken it, it will accomplish that which I send it to do. So he says here, my word is that which comes out of my mouth. It will not return to me empty. 
it will not return to me void. The Bible says that all things are possible to those that believe. Believe what? Believe God. Believe His Word. That's what Isaiah 55 is saying to us. God is saying, I don't promise what I cannot do. It is the desire of God that you may walk in total life prosperity, nothing missing and nothing broken. And as far as God is concerned, you can walk in total life prosperity if you just believe the Word of God. Say amen, somebody.